Hi, this is Alex. I'm experienced design lead here at Immerse. I'm going to join a VR session now with a colleague to show our UI package, which is a new component of our SDK, as well as some of the related interaction package 1.4 updates. Here you can see our new pin panel, which is designed to comfortably track the user's gaze and any movement, but I'll cover this in more detail once I've entered my pin. Hey, how's it going? I'm creative lead at Immerse. Me and Alex have been working on these SDK updates. And we've created this scene to showcase the new features. There's a lot to cover here, so to start off, the general idea behind all this is to enable development teams to quickly create good-looking and user-friendly UI. Yeah, we found that UI and UX menu design isn't always a top priority with projects, especially where there may be a limited budget, but it can often be front and center of experiences at the same time. So we set out to solve that issue. So around us, we've marked up menus that show what the new UI package looks like out of the box in its default settings. And all of this comes from research that we did. With this research, we assessed a range of VR games, applications and tools, and we looked for commonalities and trends and what worked and what didn't, and came up with a few ideas from our own experience. And, and testing too. What we've produced here is still completely configurable and we've tried to balance customization with overall utility. So all the menus you can see around us have been built using the components available in the UI package. Yeah, these components are things like windows, buttons, sliders, toggles, and are presented as a list in Unity that can be dropped into a scene to start building with. They're all customizable, and one of the easiest things to customize is the theme, which we've made to be the most straightforward way to get your own look. For this, we've built a theming system which enables control on menu colors at a global or per menu level. Scenes can contain multiple themes, and it's all controlled via a color palette. This is set up by assigning colors into primary secondary and tertiary slots and can be expanded to cover text and extra color slots if needed to. So once you have this color palette set up, then you begin to set up your theme asset where you can add in any UI components you need. The really powerful part of all this is when the system automatically assigns colors to the predefined states of each component. You can see these different color states in action here. Again, everything here is configurable so you can really set things as you need. Yeah, so once you have the theme asset set up correctly, you can drop it onto the menu prefab and it will update all the components in your menu in real time. All of this really eases the workflow for developers and designers. That covers the theming. So moving on, one thing to quickly cover is that all the menus can be toggled to track user height, as I can demonstrate here. This allows for both standing and seated use, but also means users of different heights have the same experience. The height tracking can be per user or synchronized across multiple users too. Another thing to mention are the new hand gestures, which are now more standardized and we've adjusted their avatar hand position too to better match your real hand. This was important for these UI interactions and also allows for more expressive gestures too. But also all of these poses can be used in other ways for say, having different poses for picking up large versus small objects. So let's teleport over here and look at some of the other features and UI components. Regarding teleportation, we've updated the teleport UI to bring it in line with everything else. It shows the direction of travel now and the end destination is much clearer. It also now works with angled surfaces. Yes, uh, this also ties into the new waypoints, which can be made invisible as we have here, or this can be switched to a visible marker option that animates when rolled over. Useful for first time VR users to help them understand the whole mechanic here. Anyway, Jack's over at the first menu there. One big aspect of our approach that came out of our research we did is that we wanted to give users a choice in how they'd want to interact by using touch or laser pointers rather than forcing them to go with either one. When we tested this, we found that users would just naturally use touch, while others would use the laser pointer. Of course, developers can use this to make bigger menus that are maybe 
further away and only use this the laser pointer if they want. So this applies to everything from this keyboard to the pin panel for logging in. You can see that all the rollover states would work with both laser and touch. For touch, the auto point feature can be enabled to make it so the hand is in the right state to push a button, regardless of whether the user is making the right gesture. Also, on rollover, you can now enable pop-ups too to help the user navigate. So, Alex, do you want to cover haptics here? We've integrated some interesting haptics that are subtle, but really aid the interaction. There's a haptic pulse when you roll over each button with the laser pointer, which feels really nice. And when I use touch, I get a very soft haptic pulse when I first touch the surface of each key. Then when I push the key all the way down, I get a stronger click. Yeah, this gives everything a really tactile feel. Also, the same button animation is used for laser pointer interactions too. Another UX feature that really aids touch interaction is the UI collision. This can be used to stop the hand passing through components when interacting, which again makes everything feel really nice. With the input fields here, these can be used in conjunction with the keyboard. The keyboard layout is completely configurable and it can be updated to show a variety of layout and supports different character sets. Here you can see some of the default states for the input fields. I think that's about it for this menu. Let's move on. One thing we haven't touched on so far is the parallax effect we have in the background. This is also changeable via the theming system or it can be toggled off. Yeah, we spent a while coming up with something that was subtle and it also gives the menus depth whilst being flat at the same time. And it's only really an effect that's possible in VR, which is kind of cool. It is. And we've applied a similar approach to other components too, such as with these buttons. You can see they are slightly raised off the window surface. With all this, we were careful not to overdo things. We didn't want to break established 2D menu fundamentals too much or make it hard to use. Another thing with this panel here is that all the UI can be set up with or without TextMesh Pro. Variants for all the UI components have been added to the package. But this panel also shows off an interesting subtitle feature. When I press this button, we'll see a video that shows this off. This means you can really easily sequence subtitles against content in the scene like this, or use it for something like voiceover. The Immerse SDK by Immerse is a modular framework for building enterprise XR experiences and is available for free. So with this, we support import of a standard subtitles SRT file, which makes getting going much more straightforward. Yeah, so in this example, we showed the subtitle text on the video itself, but this can also be displayed in a user's camera view. So the subtitles are seen at all times by the user. Should we move on? So scrolling is implemented in a natural way, the same as if you were scrolling on a touch screen. It's also customizable so it can be shown at all times instead. We've placed it outside of the window as we aren't confined by window space in VR and it makes for a less cluttered UI as a result. On the subject of less cluttered UI, another related aspect is the latching option. So we've used the latching button in some of our own projects already. They're a really great way to uh, ensure deliberate input by a user. Again, navigation like this can be shown outside of the main window. With these confirmation buttons, we are showing the page controller functionality. This allows sub pages to be set up within the same window and can be used for moving through denser UIs or surveys and things like that. The window also shows the slider component, again, interactable via touch or laser. One visual aspect we've added is a subtle reflection to the menu panel. We did this to not only make things look slicker, but to look more like a touch interface that you find on a tablet or phone so that users more instinctively know that they can opt to use touch. We spent a while getting this right, just so it works in any environment, but also so it doesn't affect legibility. Again, though, this is all customizable. So let's continue moving around. This table simply shows the new tooltip style, which is similar to the newly styled name tags, as you can see here. Oh, uh, the arrow of the tooltips can now be positioned more freely too. If I pick up an object, you can see the default behavior, which is to not show the hand. 
but if developers do want to show the hand, there's a new custom hand pose feature in the latest interaction package. So Jack's already at the final menu. Yeah, this menu simply shows the default transition animation. So in the future, we hope to add features like templates for common menus, like say a language select menus and other things like UI sounds. We've been using this in our own solutions projects already and it's definitely helped. So we hope other developers find it useful too. Yeah, we'd welcome any feedback on it as well. So feel free to let us know your thoughts. Otherwise, I think that's it.